We turn our attention to the Philadelphia Eagles. As you can see, they open up week one in the division against the Skins. Then it's primetime football week four, Sunday night against San Francisco. More primetime football in week seven and eight. Uh, looking at these Eagles and the schedule ahead. The number's nine and a half, but how are we playing it? Let's welcome our guys back in, Jonathan Jones, Danny Cannell. Uh, we're talking Eagles, guys. As I said, the number's nine and a half. Danny, when you look at that schedule, the way things set up for the defending division champs who are trying to repeat in that division where it's been so hard to do so in the past, how are you liking this schedule for the Eagles? I think it's extremely manageable. You know, it's 25th ranked as far as the toughest in the league, so it's not that daunting of a task. To me, it all comes down to Carson Wentz health. I mean, it really does. Uh, you know, they drafted Jalen Hurts to boost up the depth of that position. Who knows if we're going to see Jalen Hurts as a true backup that sits on the bench with a clipboard, or are you going to see some Taysom Hill, you know, version of an offense that's rolled out there for him? But the offense, it, or excuse me, the schedule as it sits, the NFC East, if you're the Cowboys or the Eagles, you're basically getting a leg up because we know the Giants are going to be very good. I don't think the Washington Redskins are going to be that good, especially with the lack of an offseason with Ron Rivera trying to get everybody up to speed. Non conference are not out of division you have the saints it's going to be tough the rams will be tough baltimore's tough so there are some challenges there nine and a half i would probably lean the under i think they're probably a nine and seven team um but a lot of this is my more of my question marks about carson wentz being able to play a complete 16 games and finish out the season so i would lean towards the under but i don't love this bet to be honest with you yeah no disrespect to the washington redskins but they get a bit of a dress rehearsal at washington week one jj then they wrap it up the final week of the season against washington uh what can something like that those bookends do for a team's confidence to start the season and then maybe get one when you need one uh, in the final week of the season. Yeah, it's going to be very important in week one facing Washington, and I do think that's going to be a layup. Again, no disrespect to that team, to that franchise, uh, and to the new coaching staff there. But yeah, they're, they're just, they don't even know who their quarterback is, is honestly going to be in week one. They hope it's, uh, it's Dwayne Haskins. But, you know, if, they, if he only gets two or three weeks of training camp in this new system, who knows? So I look at this Philadelphia Eagles team when I'm looking at the schedule. They could very easily start 3-0 very easily start 3 and 0 and then they get to 3 and 3 after when they play uh, the 49ers, the Steelers and the Ravens. Here's where it's going to be trouble for them. It December, they could lose 5 straight. When you got in week 12, November 30th against the Seahawks, then you have uh, then you have the Packers, the Saints. I don't want to see Arizona with Kyler Murray in year two and New Hopkins and all of those guys as they are feeling themselves in the middle of December, maybe looking at that seventh seed uh, as they are competing. And then they have the Cowboys before finally finishing with Washington. I could see five straight losses for Philly when they go after Thanksgiving with a winning record. December could absolutely derail Philadelphia and Carson Wentz's hopes.